to my channel and if this is your first time here thank you for stopping by today we're gonna go over how to epoxy a cup now I want to preface this with like there probably are several several ways to do this this is just the way that I do it we're gonna go over how to mix your epoxy some helpful tips and tricks we're gonna go over how to apply it to a tumbler and then at the very end, we're gonna go over how to clean up the rim after you're already done and get it ready to deliver to the customer. So let's get into it. So I always start with marking my lines with a permanent marker that makes it easier for me to see when I've got the cup on the table and filling it with the resin and the hardener um, you know because I'm getting older and might be a little blind <laughs> so I put my organic vapor respirator on and we're actually going to be mixing two batches so I can show you something here in a minute but I start with a three minute sand timer because I need a visual for the time because I kind of get lost in thought sometimes and lose track of time. And I have a part A and a part B because my epoxy system is a one to one ratio. This is 91% alcohol in a little pumper bottle and a metal stir stick. You can use a plastic knife or whatever you have. <laughs> Paper towels to wipe my metal stir stick off when I'm finished. So I always start with part A because it's heavier and this has been warmed in a hot water bath on a candle warmer and the reason I warm it is because it mixes so much easier you guys. When it's cold it kind of has a lot of resistance so it introduces a lot of extra bubbles that you're just going to have to contend with later. So now I'm adding part B and you want to make sure if you're using a one to one ratio epoxy system that you get these measurements as close to perfectly even as possible. You want your mix ratio to be right because if you don't it could leave your cups tacky or sticky and they will never cure properly. Um, that's a lot of times what happens. Um, when you have fish eyes and things like that is that your epoxy could potentially not be mixed properly. See how cloudy it is here you guys? You want to make sure you continue mixing until that is absolutely clear again. And I go around and kind of scrape the edges of my cup and scrape off my stir stick off and on throughout the mixing process. That way I'm getting every part of both of those parts incorporated properly. You also want to mix for the full time that your epoxy system recommends. That's pretty important too. So we're just going to continue mixing until it's clear. I know it seems to take forever. <laughs> and then I just wipe off my stir stick when I'm done, get it ready for the next time. So in these two batches of epoxy, the one on the left has been just mixed up, the one on the right has been sitting for about five minutes. See the difference in how clear the one on the right is? If you let it sit up for three to five minutes, those bubbles will rise to the top and pop on their own before you even start working your epoxy onto your cup. Here I'm just using a small level at the rim of the cup where there's probably no epoxy or anything else to be unlevel or cause any problems there. And I just take a few minutes to make sure that that cup is completely level so that it's not pooling at one side or the other as that epoxy self levels and cures. That way you don't have to sand down any bubbles or bumpy bits or anything like that. And then I, I like to have it spin into my hand. I just feel like I have a little more control over the epoxy. And I just dump a little at a time on and I am just barely guiding this epoxy. I'm not pushing down hard. And I have found when I do this, it kind of pushes out the bubbles as I'm going along. I hardly ever have any bubbles on my cup when I do it this way. I sealed this holographic vinyl with some polycrylic before I got started. 
Sometimes if you don't seal your decals and things like that, you're gonna get a lot of micro bubbles, or at least I did when I first got started. But after sealing with the polyacrylic and using the epoxy in this way, I find that I do not have bubbles and get a very clear, crystal clear finish every time. It's amazing. So I go along like this and then I make sure that I get the bottom because you don't want any lumpy bumpy bottoms. <laughs> And then I actually, kind of with the basket weave idea, I go from bottom to top and up and over that lip because I've already gone the other way. And so now going this way, I ensure that I get every single part of this cup. And if you're doing it with a glove finger like this, you'll be able to feel if there is any part of that cup that you have missed. And I'm going slowly up and over the lip of that cup We've already sanded this cup and revealed just a small section of stainless steel so that that epoxy can seal properly to that stainless cup instead of the paint or anything else that might potentially come loose. So then I let it spin for about three to five minutes so that that epoxy can self level. And then I come in with, I just have a kitchen torch that you would use for like creme brulee or something like that. Alternately, you can use a propane torch. Um, and I just pick a spot on my turner so it acts as a visual for me and I let it go around probably two, two and a half times and you're not going to hold your flame in any one spot for any length of time because you don't want to burn or scald your epoxy. This is just lightly going over it to help release any bubbles that might have gotten trapped kind of down a little bit. And then I'm going to let this spin for 8 to 12 hours or for like me, <laughs> it wound up turning overnight. So then I'm coming back in the next morning and this I have mixed up 15 milliliters of epoxy as this is my final coat on this cup. And I just do the same thing. I'm going to slowly go side to side with this or let it spin into my hand, you know. and making sure that I get every part of this cup and that I'm going to get the bottom again and then again with that basket weave mentality go up the opposite way so from the bottom to the top and taking that epoxy up and over that lip just to make sure that we have a complete seal to that stainless steel rim and then I'll show you how to clean up any parts that got up and over that. Let it spin three to five minutes to self level and bring any bubbles to the top and then take the torch to it one more time. I have found that this has worked out really well for me. I know a lot of other people use the big propane torch. I just haven't, for me personally, found that it's been necessary since I started doing, laying on my epoxy this way. So I forgot to press record when I was showing how to clean up the cup on that other one, so I figured I'd just show you on this one. This was a Milky Way, so I've got a lot of extra bits <laughs> up on top here so you take a very sharp craft knife and I'm cutting away from myself and just letting the blade do the work you don't want to press too hard and risk gouging the cup or risk the craft knife getting away and accidentally cutting your finger or something so sometimes there's these little bits inside and you're gonna take the tip of your craft knife and you're not gonna gouge the inside of the cup. You're just gonna to try to get right up under the lip of that blob and kind of pop it loose. You don't wanna gouge the inside of your cup because you don't want to, one, it's an aesthetic thing, but two, you don't want to break that seal on that stainless steel and potentially cause rust later on. So then I just barely am scraping along the edge of this to make sure that I've got any extra little bits of epoxy off that cup. 
and then we're going to move on to taking some acetone just on a paper towel and I wear one of those chemical resistant gloves here because acetone's pretty drying and then I just start with going around the top of the rim look how yucky that is <laughs> and then just work my way on inside and sometimes you need to switch out paper towels um sometimes when you get all done there is a little haze on there that can't be wiped away with acetone i'm not sure why but i found that if you take a magic eraser dumped or dunked in acetone it will take it right off so i just concentrate here on this little lip make sure that any parts that are kind of hanging out right there on that ledge that I get out and then I will take this upstairs and wash in soap and Dawn dish or excuse me wash in water and Dawn dish soap to make sure that I've got all the acetone residue off of it and everything and then you have a nice shiny clean cup <laughs> This is so satisfying to me personally to have all that gunk and now it's all like almost factory brand new. <laughs> so then I let my cup sit for three days before I package it and send it to the customer that's going to allow the chemicals to finish doing their thing. And then I'm not risking denting it with the bubble wrap that I wrap it up with um, to send to the customer. And that's it. So thank you guys so very much for watching this video. Please make sure to like and subscribe. Follow us on all social media, Facebook, Pinterest, Instagram, and TikTok. And if you have any questions or comments, please definitely leave them down below. Thanks guys. See you next time.